When the author of a scientific theory says he didn't propose it to be either proven or falsified, you know you're not dealing with science. Hey everybody, my name is Leah Benson, and I'm a licensed body-based psychotherapist, coach, and psychedelic guide in Tampa Bay. And today, I'm going to catch you up on some undisputed physiology and a little bit of 21st century brain science. Because there's a popular idea out there charading as the science of mental health. Let me start by saying that, yes, being connected to others who make us feel safe, seen, and soothed is of the utmost importance. I'm also fully behind the physiological truth that slowing down the heart calms our body and mind. And yes, I know that other people, the right people, can help us calm down for very specific reasons. Just not the ones alleged by the author of the polyvagal idea. That said, here we go for some myth busting. Back in the 1990s, a professor named Stephen Porges proposed an idea that one of the nerves coming out of your brain coordinates something called a social engagement system. On the surface, it's sort of a neat story about how your mental health goes awry and how you can get it back in order. He went down all these scientific sounding rabbit holes of evolutionary physiology to prove his point, which in the end came to mean three basic things according to his idea and as listed currently on his Polyvagal Institute website. Number one. The autonomic nervous system has three states, and they're a hierarchy. Number two, the autonomic nervous system, together with a section of the brain, runs a built-in surveillance system that scans and interprets incoming data all the time. Number three, without our awareness, the body is constantly sending out signals to other people telling them we are safe or dangerous and that they can come close or should stay away. Unfortunately for him and everybody who fell prey to this fairy tale, including me for several years, none of the claims are proven by the field of physiology or the latest data on brain function. In fact, they're demonstrated to be patently false and scientifically incorrect. So let's start with the nervous system. First, you've got a brain and a spinal cord, which are called the central nervous system or CNS. Then you've got nerves that control your skeletal muscles called the somatic nervous system and nerves that control your involuntary organs called the autonomic nervous system. And this is where the story goes wonky. See, according to physiologists and anatomists who don't ascribe to the polyvagal idea, which is the vast majority of them, the autonomic nervous system has two states or branches, the sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch, which can simply be translated to the active state and the resting state. But according to Porges, the autonomic nervous system is a hierarchical three-state system. He says at the top of the hierarchy is a socially engaged state called ventral vagal activation. The next state is one of energetic high arousal or anxiety that he says all mammals live in constantly unless they are socially engaged, which is the sympathetic state. And finally, there's a state of energetic downregulation called dorsal vagal activation, where one is spaced out, depressed, dissociated, or literally passed out. He then further complicates his three-state hierarchical nervous system idea by saying that there are hybrid states, each comprising two of the three basic states that describe specific psychological experiences such as competition, making love, or caring for young, and fear. As if specific psychological experiences are categorizable as specific physiological states 
in every instance, which they are not. And as I mentioned at the beginning, he gives credit to one of the 12 nerves that come out of your brain for being the basis of and for coordinating this mythical hierarchical nervous system. And that nerve is the currently very fa famous vagus nerve, a giant nerve that wanders all over your upper torso and abdomen. Hence his terms ventral and dorsal vagal activation. He says there's an evolutionary difference between humans' vagus nerves and other animals' vagus nerves. And once again, he is the lone voice of this belief in the vast landscape of anatomists and physiologists the world over. Because the evidence he uses to make this claim has been falsified. So that's that. Now, on to the fundamentals of 21st century brain science. Brains are understood to have a core function, which is the regulation and coordination of an organism's internal systems, like the immune system, the endocrine system, the reproductive system, and so forth. And the way they do this is that they anticipate the energy needs of the various organs and systems in the body, keyword anticipate, and they prepare to meet those needs before they arise. In a nutshell, this means that a brain doesn't react to things. What it does is run a model of its body in the world, which means it simulates a reality through something called prediction, sets in motion actions appropriate to that simulated reality, and then when its model is wrong, updates the model through something called prediction error, which is just a fancy way of saying learning so it can predict better in the future. Now you might be saying, whoa, 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 predictions, model, prediction, what? If so, let me explain. I'm grazing over a year's, a couple of years worth of explanations here, but the story is that there's a computational theory of brain function that comes from physics and math, and it's called the free energy principle. And the way the free energy principle makes a bit more sense in normal people talk and in psychology terms is called predictive processing and active inference. And this stuff is the deep end of the 21st century brain science. So I'm just hitting the high points. But it's why Porges is wrong. Now, if you're wondering what are predictions and where do they come from? Well, they're the best guess that a brain has about what's happening at this moment. And where they come from is all your past experiences. As a whole, they make up the model of your body in the world that your brain carries around. And that model is what allows a brain to conduct the process in the body that gets the right amount of energy for a situation in advance of the situation depending on what the brain thinks the situation is to where it needs to be in the body. And since Porges is using falsified science to explain brain function, he says that your brain and nervous system scan for safety and danger. But to reiterate, what 21st century brain science says is that the brain is projecting a model of itself in the world to itself which is what we call our conscious awareness. In other words, a brain doesn't take in and experience reality as it is. It contains reality inside in the form of its model built from past experience. And it actively looks for evidence in the world or in the body to confirm the truth of that model. Sometimes what's in the world can't be plugged into the model. In which case, one of two things can happen. The brain can ignore that information and potentially continue with a delusion or other non-functional behavior. Or it can update its model with new information. So it has more options of how to predict better next time. This means many things that I won't address here, but relevant to this talk, what it means is two things. 
the notion that we are always scanning for safety or danger as if there's such a thing in some static or real way, and the idea that we are always sending out cues of safety or danger to others are scientifically incorrect. In other words, they're wrong. And besides being wrong because that's not how brains work, they're wrong because if they were correct, it would mean that safety and danger are specific things that can be seen objectively in the world. And it would mean that all safety and danger are the same for every person, which to state the obvious, they aren't. So the three key principles of the polyvagal idea are simply wrong. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Do we need other people to help us calm down sometimes? Yes, we do. There's no debate about that. We learned to calm ourselves down in our early lives based on our interactions with other people. In fact, we built our model of how or not to calm ourselves down in relationship with other people. And if those people weren't that good at calming us down or calming themselves down, then we carry around a poor model of calming ourselves down and maybe a model of other people as dangerous or unpredictable too. This outcome is not the result of a mythical social engagement system in your head. It's the result of the model you have about your body in the world and in relationship to other people and to the various uncertainties of life. And to be clear, it goes without saying that uncertainties about who people are and how they will act in general or toward us, or feeling sure that someone is unpredictable, <clears throat> can make us energetically aroused, for sure. But again, that's not the result of a faulty social engagement system or ventral vagus nerve. It's the result of the basics of how brains work which is that when they are faced with something the model can't predict with certainty, a brain will provide you with the energy you need to do some learning and make a better model. Many people will call that energy anxiety. Some people will call it excitement. The current trend is to call it a trauma response, which is absolutely absurd because it's really nothing more than the brain state necessary for learning or movement. Plain and simple. Yes, novelty and uncertainty cause arousal in the nervous system. Again, so the body can move or so the brain can build a better model. That's not the result of having spotted danger in the environment. It's the result of the normal process of brain function. And it needs to stop being pathologized by silly stories of reactive brains that are victims to mythical systems in there. Polyvagal does not help you understand what's actually happening inside of you. It tells you a bunch of scientific falsehoods to sell training programs and community. And that's fine, but buyer beware. If you want the real science, check out the theory of constructed emotion and information on predictive processing and active inference. And if you want to build a better model with some therapy or consultation, you can find me at leahbensontherapy.com. See you next time. <laughs>